Righty ho, let's talk part two of the what if video, eh? Um, Crosshair Jack asks me, what do I think would happen if religion were outlawed one year from now? I think there would be chaos. I think, um, it's like I said before, um, it's difficult to make something illegal if the population is not going to go along with you. To a large degree, law enforcement depends on the cooperation of the population. And when it comes to outlawing religion, because people who profess some sort of belief in a deity do outnumber those who don't by such a wide margin, I think you're talking revolution, and I don't think it would take very long. It's difficult for me to imagine how such a thing, such a law would ever come into being, but then again, it's hard to imagine how alcohol was ever made illegal once upon a time. So, you know, you, you never say never uh, with, with stuff like this. But I do happen to think that there would be significant social upheaval if uh, there was any attempt to make religion illegal. So, uh, yeah. Um, no Witty Names Left asks me, what if Barack Obama announced he was an atheist? Well, he better wait till his uh, second term uh, if he was going to announce such a thing, because any man or woman who announced that they were an atheist would never win the nomination for President of the United States. Uh, which, of course... I, as an unbeliever, find unfortunate, um, especially because the Constitution specifically mentions no religious test uh, for office, you know, but hey, uh, wishful thinking, right? Anyway, what do I think would actually happen, though, if he announced he was an atheist? I think there would be moves to get him drummed out of office as a liar and a hypocrite. Um, even if he said he deconverted while in office, I still think people would always suspect that he was not really a Christian or... In fact, if he said he was an atheist, people probably would think that he wasn't really an atheist. He was really just a Muslim, but didn't want to admit to being Christian anymore. I mean, you get conspiracy theories on that level, I'll bet you. Uh, so yeah, that's my thoughts on that. Seek the visceral. Um, what if the zombie apocalypse happened in the Bermuda Triangle? Would I stop eating fish? Um, <laughs> the zombie apocalypse. Uh, if the zombie apocalypse happened in the Bermuda Triangle, we would never know about it because they would have all vanished mysteriously. So maybe it's already happened. And uh, no, I wouldn't stop eating fish. Not unless my fish were also zombies. Don't know. Look at 87 asks, what will happen if 2012 is a big government joke? Well, I can't wait to find out, because it is a big joke. I'm not so sure it's a government joke, although the government probably likes the fact that there's so many people uh, bouncing around, uh, going, oh, what's going to happen, what's going to happen? You know, um, end of the worlders uh, is a little, a little mini industry of its own, and I'm sure they make a, a lot of money on tax revenue and that type of thing. I mean, basically, I think the same sort of thing will happen about the Millennium Bug. Um will happen with 2012. In other words, not a fucking thing. The most significant thing that's going to happen for this planet in the year 2012 is that I'm going to turn 50. Raven Slaves asks, what if LSD never happened? What would the world be like? Well, I'm going to hopefully assume that you meant what would my personal look on the world be if I never came across LSD because I think if LSD was never invented, it, the world wouldn't be hardly any different so but my world certainly would be um and i would have to throw in mushrooms i mean personally i believe that you know if you take strong psychedelics like uh strong mushrooms or lsd uh you never really go back um it's kind of like losing your virginity there's there's a part of you which uh and you know pre-med too might disagree with me about this because he's quite um well educated on neuroscience and he's also um you know um a veteran of the psychic wars, as we say. So yeah, um, LSD, uh, I haven't done a lot of LSD in my life. You know, I've probably had maybe 10 or 11 trips on acid in my life um, over the past 20 something years. And uh, it is something I do enjoy doing, but you have to be in the right state of mind to even attempt it. You've got to be in the right company, have the right music and atmosphere, etc., etc., etc. It's not something to take lightly. Um, my own personal life would definitely be different, though. I don't think I would be anywhere near as open-minded and liberal um, as I am um, if I hadn't had my mind forced open um, by psychedelics. So, yeah. Kelico70 says, What would have happened in the art world if Andy Warhol never became an artist? Same question with Geiger or Dolly. 
well, things would be different, that's for sure. Um, I'm not a huge fan of Andy Warhol. I understand why people say he was significant. Um, I'm more of a Lichtenstein guy when it comes to the whole pop art thing, and I think if uh, Warhol never made it, Lichtenstein would have been even bigger than he already was. As for Geiger, um, I, I, I don't have enough good words to say about how cool I think his artwork is, but I'm not sure his loss would have diminished very much in terms of his influence on other artworks. Can't say the same about Salvador Dali, though. I mean, uh, Salvador Dali, you could be cynical and say his main influence on the art world was Salvador Dali made a point of using his art to get rich. Um, and you can see evidence of that in some modern artists. Damien Hirst jumps to mind on that one. Um, I mean, some of these people are unashamedly all about the bucks. They're, they're, they want the money. So uh, Salvador Dali, in part, um, whether he meant to or not, left that sort of legacy. It's like, yeah, let's, let's just be prolific and produce a whole bunch of very similar crap um, and sell it for fortunes, you know, so... And, and more power to him, by the way. I'm not saying I disagree. I'm just saying that uh, a lot of artists, uh, they like, they prefer the whole struggling artist thing. And they, and uh, you know, how can you struggle if you're filthy rich, right? Anyway, um, Lightmobile. What would things be like if humans developed telepathic awareness of each other's emotions? That's a fucking good question. You know, I I would love to believe that um, people would get along better. Um, it depends. If you were just aware of someone else's emotions, that would be one thing. But if you could palpably feel them as well to gain your awareness, I think that you'd be in a completely different ballpark if that was the case. And if that latter part was the case, yeah, I do think that human beings would get along a lot better. I think we'd be much more careful as well when we chose our um, life mates. Yeah, you know, um, I mean, not just romantic friend uh, relationships, but friendships as well. And uh, last but not least, uh, Nelly Diddle asked me, what would have happened if I remained a stripper or a fireman? Well, I mean, I have done stripping, but I was never a stripper in the sense that it was a, a regular job. I've, I've done two strip teases basically for hen nights, and I did get paid for them, so um, I count them as as employment. But um, uh, no, I don't, um, I don't think anything would be different about my life if I never did that. And if I continued to do that... Um, things would definitely be different. I think um, had I continued to, to strip for money, it probably would have gone to my head a little bit. Because um, at, at the age I was at, you know, I pretty much did think that the world revolved around me back then. Shocking, I know. Um, anyway, if I never, oh, if I always remained a fireman, I probably would still be living in the hometown where I grew up in. Um, when I was growing up, my hometown had about 3,000 people in it. Now it's got about 30,000 people in it. The fire department went from being a little backwater shack into a, my dad transformed it as fire chief into a, you know, a, a very high quality um, quick response unit. And um, so, you know, I'm really proud of what my dad did there. However, uh, being a fireman just is not my cup of tea. Um, if I stayed in the fire department, I probably would be a lot more narrow minded than I am now. Um, because to be blunt, a lot of my colleagues were rednecks and you got to go along to get along and I you know I believe it or not in my my younger life I was considerably farther to the right um, socially and politically than I than I am and have been for the past 25 years or so but when I was a young man and a teenager I was I was pretty much a right winger um, I definitely believed uh, there should be no welfare for example anyway I'm getting way off topic now so if I if I stayed a fireman I think um, I probably would have married somebody um, American. I probably would have three or four kids. I probably never would have left my home county. And I'm sure uh, those options don't necessarily scare me. You know, that's a, a life path I could have taken but chose not to. And I certainly have no regrets because my life's been brilliant. I wouldn't trade my life for anybody's. All right. Thank you for everybody um, asking me such interesting questions. I hope this was a a more interesting Q&A than I might have otherwise done. And lucky me, I managed to get all these questions done in two videos. Lucky you as well, eh? It's Got That Funk here. Thanks for watching, and may all your ups and downs be ups.